Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to the channel Bookables. Today I'm here to do one of my favorite videos that I do every single year that I love and adore, Summer Reads. These books are perfect to read in the summer months. They're books that are set in summer that take place near a beach, lake, that have that beautiful summer setting that are perfect to read on a beach or a lake or a summer setting. They are just great summer reads. So I'm gonna have a lot of repeats. I've done this video many, many years, so I'll link them down below. So you might see some books that I talk about today that I've talked about several times, but you know what? They're just quintessential summer reads in my opinion. So first up, I wanna talk about my ladies, Christina Lauren. They write some amazing summer reads. This one is my favorite book by them. It's The Unhoneymooners. It came out years ago. I love it. Look at the cover. Tropical, so beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. So this book follows two characters, Olive and Ethan, and Olive's twin sister is getting married. And of course, she's the maid of honor. And of course, if you're the maid of honor, you get paired up with the best man a lot. And the best man is Ethan, who she loathes. They do not like each other. The wedding comes, everything goes great. The reception comes. Everyone gets violently sick of food poisoning, but Olive and Ethan. And everyone gets so sick that Olive's own sister can't even go on her honeymoon. So she's like, you know what? Go. I don't want to waste this trip to Maui. Go take Ethan so at least it'll be used. So Olive and Ethan have to go to Maui. Oh my gosh, how horrible. But they have to pretend to be newlyweds. And you can guess it's a hate to love, tropical setting, beautiful, fun book that is perfect to read on the beach. That's all I'm going to talk about because I've talked about this like every single summer reads. If you know, you know. So you know. <laughs> but I do want to talk about their newest release, which is also a great summer read, and that is The Paradise Problem. This one I always says reminds me of the show White Lotus on HBO. Very rich people on a resort. And this one we follow Anna and Liam, who got married in college just to have subsidized housing. And years later, they're still married. And Liam comes to Anna and he's like, hey, I need a favor. I need you to come to Singapore on this private island because my sister's getting married. It's a two week long affair on a private island. I need you to pretend to be my wife, you know, for inheritance, I'll pay you. And she's like, well, sure, why not? And so she has to kind of reinvent herself, like get a whole new brand wardrobe with Gucci and Dior and brands I can't even think of because I'm not rich at all. And she has to go and pretend to be a rich wife. And it is a fun book. It is really absurd. His family is like billionaire rich. I mean, if you can have a two week long wedding event and have your own private island, like you're like super mega rich. This was fun. I enjoyed it. Fake dating set on a private island. Like if you want summary, these two are the summariest for you. Another book I always recommend is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is a great one. This is set in a kind of seaside fishing town, I guess you could say. In this book, we follow two characters, Piper and Brennan. Piper is a rich girl, very much inspired by Alexis from Schitt's Creek. Love that journey for me. And basically she is sent to this small fishing town to revamp her deceased father's kind of bar. And there she meets Brennan, who is a gruff and grumpy fisherman, but they have instant attraction. And it's all about this seaside town and it's a summer and they fall in love and steamy time happens, but it's a fun one. This is one of my favorite Tessa Bailey books. And I really enjoyed it. Again, if you want kind of not the beachy vibes, but the seaside town, this is great for that. Likewise, with my next book, I will talk about The Catch by Amy Lee. This is also set in a very seaside kind of fishing town. I love my beach towns, but I also love my seaside fishing towns, you know? It follows again, two characters, it follows Mel and it follows Evan. And Mel is a Instagrammer and basically she gets an opportunity to review this bed and breakfast, but it falls through. And so she has to stay at this really run down one where she meets Evan, who is again, the owner of the bed and breakfast and kind of a gruff fisherman and they have a very hate to love connection again set in a small town lots of family drama steamy i really loved it i don't hear a lot of people talking about this one this year but it's a great one again if you want kind of seaside towns these two are the books for you if you want some angst in your summer romances i get it the roughest draft by emily wiberly and awesome scene mabroka is the book for you this is their very first adult published novel and it's still my favorite the last two they have released I have not loved this one still is my favorite so this one I follow again two characters Katrina and Nathan and they met in college and they decided to become co-writers they wrote this book together and it got huge it was a bestseller everything went amazing and then they had a huge falling out now it's been many many years their agent calls them and they're like hey 
you've got one book left on this deal. You guys have to write it together. So they go back to the Florida town that they wrote the first book together and they have to mend the relationship all while writing a book. This one really gives you the details of writing a book and how it comes to be. They also have a lot of pent up feelings. Like this is a book that's like, just communicate. Communication is horrible in this book, like straight up horrible, but man, I enjoyed it. They're set in this summery, Florida town where the humidity is insane. Oh, I get that. I live in Virginia. It is humid. I sweat like nobody's business. Like you step outside and it's just sweat humidity. So I really connected with that. But I really enjoyed it. It was a fun one. You also want some heartache with your summer reads just for the summer. But Jimenez is a book for you. This has been my favorite book of the year so far. I loved it. It says just for the summer and the cover looks beachy and fun and cute and this book is not that. It is intense. It is romantic, yes, but it's a romantic one that'll punch you in the face. Like it is, mm, it's intense. So in this book we follow, again, two characters. We follow Emma and Justin and they connect on a Reddit thread because they both think they have this curse of like whoever they date when they break up, the person that they date will go on to find the love of their life and they're just there floundering. And so they decide, hey, let's just date just for the summer. And that way our curses will cancel out each other and the next people we find will be the loves of our lives. And of course, it's much more intense than that. This book is full of a lot of past trauma. Emma has a lot of trauma with her mom and growing up and her mom reappears in her life and it is intense. And we also have Justin who is dealing with a lot with his family because he is becoming the guardian for his three younger siblings because his mother's going to jail. And so both of these characters are dealing with some heavy, heavy things, but they still fall in love but they don't know how to kind of combat that with everything going on in their life because they can't just fall in love and be hunky-dory because they have really intense real responsibilities that comes from that but it's set in Minnesota which I think all of Abby's books are and it's in the summer and he shows her lots of summery things it's even set like she lives on this cabin on the middle of the lake which is really fun and it's got that summer vibe to it but if you want a book that is not just summery but with a lot of intense feelings and things, this one is just that. Much like Happy Place by Emily Henry. This one is set in, I wanna say like Maine because they go to Lobster Fest and it reminds me of Bob's Burgers every time. But this one, again, it doesn't really focus more on the romance. For me, it's the friendship. It's about this character, I forget her name, Harriet, who is engaged to win. But at the beginning of the book, they're not together anymore and they have not broken it to their best friend group. And they decide to do it on this vacation. And then they learn that two of their other best friends are getting married. So they're like, crap, we can't burst their bubble. Let's just pretend to be engaged and we'll tell them when the time is right. It's all about friendship in your 30s. If you are in your 30s, I think you will connect greatly with this book. Um, a lot of people don't love this book, but I think a lot of people in their 30s love it because it's just <laughs> about friendship in your 30s and how friendships ebb and flow you go in different directions in life and it's hard and it's messy and this book shows that it's an amazing book it's set again like in maine so it's a seaside type of town they go on lots of like lobster activities and things like that in the lake and it's just a summer read but with a lot of emphasis on friendship which i really adore next up we have the rule book by sarah adams this is our second book in her cheat sheet series it's not necessary you read them in order it's always a benefit too but i think it's fine this one I'm recommending for summer because again it takes place as you can see on a tropical island. We follow two characters. We follow Nora and Derek and they were once college sweethearts. They were in love but then they broke up very abruptly and it picks up years later. Derek is a tight end for a professional football team and Nora is a sport agent and what do you know she gets assigned to Derek and he's like no 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 and so he kind of makes her life hard but then somehow they get in a predicament where they get married and so they have to kind of pretend and so they go to this island to like do a photo shoot and things like that to show like you know this was not a mistake this was not a drunken mistake in Vegas <laughs> and it's super fun if you don't know Sarah Adams writes clean romances and they're just cute this is a quintessential beach read any of Sarah Adams books are in my opinion because they're just so fast they're easy to read they're cute they're fun you get the vibe Island Affair by Priscilla Oliveris this one obviously caught my eye because of the cover <laughs> this is basically about a fake dating book and they it's set in Florida Key 
skis and it's going to make you want a vacation there. It is a fun one. It's an underrated one. I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but I love and adore. It's a great one. I recommend it completely. And then I have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is one of my least favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. I don't really love it, but this is all about a family and like some of them are really big surfers. So it's set in one night, they have this party. What year is this set in? 1983. And so they have this party and it's just a summery setting. They're like live on a beach. They surf the next day. One of them is a professional surfer. One of them is like married to a professional tennis player. Like it is just interesting. But I enjoyed it. Like I said, it's not one of my favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid books, which is shocking for me to say because I love her books. But the setting in this one and the vibe is very much kind of vintagey summer. So in case you're into that, I would recommend reading this one on a beach. I think you can go fly through it because. I will say Taylor Jenkins Reads writes very addicting books that I cannot get enough of. <laughs> and we also have Float Plan. I'm gonna end with this one by Trish Dollar. I love this book. This one again is very serious. It's got a very summery cute cover, but it's not that. This is all about a character named Anna who is grieving the loss of her fiance because he took his own life. And she decides to go on this boat trip that they always talked about. And so it's like a really intense one. Like she leaves from Florida to go like Turks and Caicos, other things. And she quickly learns she has no idea what she's doing. So she hires this um, boat guy named Keen to help her, who's also going through some things of his own. It's a journey about self-discovery. She's going on this journey on the boat, literally, but she's also going through a self-discovery journey. And it's a beautiful one. I recommend it for summer just because it is set on a boat. They go to lots of beautiful places. It's on the ocean, for goodness sake. So it does have that really beautiful, picturesque summer setting. But again, if you want a more serious toned book with your summer reading, this is a good one to read. So there you have all of the summer reads I recommend. Like I said, there's a lot. I add to it every single year, which I love and adore. I'm reading some this month that I probably should add. I probably should. They'll be in there next year. I would love to know what books you like to read in summer. Do you like to read a lot of summery setting type of books or fantasies or thrillers? Let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.